Do you suffer from crippling social anxiety? Do you constantly struggle just to speak to other human beings, even members of your own family? Are you so terrified of interpersonal interaction that just making a simple phone call feels like walking to the gallows? Me too! Now here's a crazy idea. What if someone gave a shit? That's the premise of Comey Can't Communicate, a fantasy anime that takes place in a world where people are capable of feeling empathy. Am I laying it on too thick? So this is a little too much. I think that's a little too much. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll take it down a notch. Anyway, if you're wondering why I'm making an anime video without tonkatsu, it's because this is a topic I like to take slightly more seriously, and it's very hard to be serious when I'm playing a character who is designed to be completely fucking ridiculous. Also, I've been doing that voice so much that it's been slipping into my normal everyday conversations, and that needs to stop immediately. So I am taking a short break to make a video as my regular boring ass self. So a few months ago, I went on Mal and I glanced over the fall lineup. I saw this image and I read the visible part of the plot summary because I was too lazy to scroll down and I thought, God, I'm gonna hate this. It sounds like another dumb wish fulfillment fantasy for lonely nerds. I assumed it would be like, dude, what if there was a super hot chick but she was awkward and had to be friends with your dumb fat ass and then she became your GF and shoved your cock down her throat so hard that she fucking died. For real though, I hate that anime trope where an unremarkable dork with no skills or interesting personality traits whatsoever somehow ends up being the best friend and or love interest for one or more smoking hot chicks. You see, unfortunately, as some of you may already know, beautiful women do not fall out of the sky and land on your dick, but for some reason, anime seems determined to will such a thing into existence through repetition alone. Or, I don't know, may maybe I live at the wrong latitude? Maybe that happens in more tropical regions. But like, half the time, these clueless everyman MCs are just spectators to the actual plot. They don't need to exist. Anime and manga writers just think we require them to present us with some generic looking stooge to project ourselves on so we can imagine boning the female characters. Listen. I don't need anyone's help to imagine having sex with anime girls, okay? If anything, I need help to stop doing that. So I watched all the currently released episodes of the show, and three things surprised me. First, and most unexpectedly, it actually deals directly with the topic of mental illness. Second of all, I like it a lot. And lastly, it's Komi who I really ended up identifying with. Not this guy. The original title of the show translates to Komi-san has a communication disorder. I won't try to say it in Japanese, because if I do that, some annoying weeaboo is going to leave a comment going, Oh my god, it's so painful listening to your pronunciation. And then he'll inadvertently bring down whatever YouTube server this video is hosted on as he sits there refreshing the page waiting for someone to compliment his amazing understanding of Japanese culture. Yes, people like that exist. If you're one of them, please find the nearest wood chip and jump into it, you will be doing the world a favor. Anyway, the title of the show should be something more like Komi has crippling social anxiety because she does. Uh, she's essentially Tomoko Kuroki, but she actually looks the way Tomoko does in her fantasies. Also, she's not a selfish asshole. She's like Tomoko 2.0. They upgraded the body and the personality, but they kept the mental illness. But even though the characters share some major similarities as shows, Komi and Watamote are nothing alike. I've seen it argued that Watamote treats the concept of social anxiety indelicately by making Tomoko's mental illness the source of the show's humor. That's fucking wrong, it's the exact opposite. Watamote drives home the brutality of mental illness by showing us how Tomoko's emotional agony doesn't translate to the outside world. People don't see her for what she is, someone in pain. They look at her and see someone acting odd or annoying or antisocial. By contrasting her internal struggle against its frequently humorous external manifestations, Watamote shows us how alone she is. It's not indelicate, it's not mean-spirited, it's horrifyingly, uncompromisingly accurate. Comey isn't like that at all. It does something completely different with the concept of mental illness. It's what I can only think to call a social anxiety fairy tale. Watamote is a study of the pain of social anxiety disorder, whereas Comey Can't Communicate is basically a very cute parable about 
how to be compassionate towards someone who suffers from it. Our generic anime protagonist, Tadno, is actually slightly less generic than most. He also suffers from anxiety, just not to the debilitating degree that Komi does. As such, he functions as a perfect translator between her and normal people because he speaks both languages, and he makes it his business to help her as much as he can. And because he's your classic pure-hearted, virginal nice guy, it is simply out of the goodness of his heart, not because of her big huge tits. Komi's goal is to make 100 friends and Tadano is determined to get her there. All jokes aside, it's pretty heartwarming, actually. I'm not gonna lie. And that's why I call this show a social anxiety fairy tale. If you were born correctly and you have a brain that works the way it's supposed to, you may not realize this, but finding a friend like this guy is a once in a lifetime thing for someone with a crippling psychiatric disorder. For a lot of people who suffer from anxiety, mood, and personality disorders, the concept of having someone who understands what you're feeling and actually wants to help is pure fucking fiction. And our girl here doesn't just have one of those people, but many. Every person in her family and circle of friends is respectful and accommodating towards Comey and her anxiety. Some of the more rambunctious, outgoing people like her mother or friend Najimi do push Comey's boundaries here and there, but just barely. On the whole, every significant person in her life treats her with the kind of gentle understanding that most of us only dream of. In addition, the entire student body at her school has mis mistaken Comey's silence and avoidance of social interaction for some kind of stoic poise, and they revere her as a pinnacle of grace and elegance. Yeah, wouldn't it be cool if literally everyone in the world so wildly misinterpreted your actions that they thought you were some kind of badass instead of a socially inept freak? I sure would love to live in a world like that! The thing is, despite the severity of her illness, Comey doesn't suffer much impairment at all. I mean, she feels a lot of anxiety, make no mistake, but it doesn't trap her in isolation like it does with Tomoko. She's able to live a fulfilling social life because everyone around her is kind and helpful. Tadno can basically read her mind and acts as her interpreter. Najimi, despite being kind of spastic, always tries to include Komi in their activities, and these two whores just worship the ground she walks on. Unless it hurts her. In episode 7, Komi slips and skins her knee at the pool, and this lunatic actually grabs a chisel and destroys the piece of ground that dared harm her lord and savior. Also, Komi's father appears to suffer from similar social issues, so she has someone in her immediate family who knows what she's going through, and there's an awkward but sweet understanding between the two. A lot of people with mental illness go their entire lives without meeting a single person who gets it other than a psychiatrist psychiatrist, and that's not necessarily worth much. At least in the US, most psychiatrists are glorified drug dealers who meet with you once or twice a month to convince you to buy more pills. For me, it wasn't until my 30s that I actually met a friend, not a doctor, just another person who believe me. My own family has watched me struggle with obsessive compulsive disorder my whole life, and they still kind of think I'm just making that shit up. When it comes to illness, most people's attitude is pics or it didn't happen, and you can't take a picture of an anxiety disorder. I'm bitter if you can't tell. So why do I like Comey Can't Communicate? Why do I like this wildly inaccurate portrayal of mental illness? At first glance, it seems like something that should really piss me off. Well, it's actually not an inaccurate portrayal at all. Comey's behavior is very consistent with someone who has social anxiety disorder. It's cartoonish and exaggerated, but this is, in fact, a cartoon, so that's kind of the point. But the way she freezes and trembles whenever anyone addresses her, the way she finds workarounds like writing out her thoughts rather than talking, and the fact that despite being terrified of social interaction, she's desperate to make connections with other people. All these things form a pretty convincing likeness of someone with social phobia. It's not as nuanced as Tomoko Kuroki, but that's fine. There's nothing wrong about it. You see, it's not Komi's anxiety that's rendered inaccurately. It's everyone's reaction to it. This show is a fantasy, but not the kind with dragons and shit. It shows us what the world would be like if people treated mental illness with the same compassion that we treat physical disability. It's a social anxiety fairy tale, a mental illness isekai into an alternate dimension where people are way more understanding. 
The world of Watamote is hell-bent on tormenting Tomoko until she takes that final ride on the ceiling fan. But in Komi Can't Communicate, it's the opposite. The whole world wants Komi to live a happy life. It shows us the best possible way to treat people with mental illness. And that's why it's something worth seeing. It's not realistic, but it's a goal to aspire to. There's a part in the pool episode where Komi is sitting alone, dwelling on this fear that she's ruined the day by skinning her knee and making everyone worry about her. She tells Tadno that she hates herself for putting a damper on her friend's good time, but he adamantly reassures her that she's done no such thing, takes her hand, and drags her out of self-imposed isolation to have fun with their friends once again. It would be nice if there were more people like this. So how do we get there? How do we make a world with more understanding people like Tadano and more people like Komi who are happy despite struggling with severe psychological issues? Well, I can sure as hell tell you how we're not gonna get there. Bitching people out on Twitter. I'll give you an example which concerns me personally. As I've mentioned before, I have a very severe case of OCD. My brain is completely broken, and every psychiatrist I go to gives me a different set of diagnoses, but OCD is the one I definitely have. I and every shrink I've ever gone to agree on that one. I'm on some Howie Mandel shit over here. Now, the term OCD is also used colloquially, and that's fine. Someone might say, oh man, I'm so OCD about insert thing here, to indicate that they're meticulous or particular about something. And every time this happens, a certain subset of people with OCD come crawling out of the woodwork to berate them for it, shouting, my disease is not your adjective, and other dumb, trite, bullshit slogans like that. All I can say to those people is shut up. Shut the fuck up. First of all, just because a word or term describes you doesn't mean you own it. Otherwise, the words horny and alone would be straight up fucking trademarked under my name. You would have to pay me to say those words. Moreover, if someone's saying shit like, LOL, I'm so OCD, they've probably never known anyone who has it, and they probably don't understand it. If you want the person to understand the disorder and be compassionate, then why would you want to make their first experience with a person who has OCD a bad one where they're getting chewed out. That's just going to create a negative association in their head. They're going to be like, wow, people with OCD are crazy assholes. That's not what we want. This is what we want. Comey. We want fucking Comey world where people with mental illness are treated compassionately and spazzing on people on social media not only doesn't get us any closer to that, it drags us further away. Please fucking think about it a little bit for once. You do not achieve understanding by screaming and shouting and demanding respect and picking apart everyone's language. You do it by fucking explaining shit to people. This anime girl is doing more for mental illness than any of you jackoffs on Twitter bitching about quote-unquote ableism. She's introducing the concept of social anxiety disorder to a lot of people who've probably never even thought about it before. She's explaining what it is and then providing examples of how to treat people with the disorder kindly. What the fuck have you done today? コミショートI hope we see more of her and more anime in general that explores mental illness. Right. Thanks for watching. Go fuck yourself.